Hello, this is Steve. I'm the lead trainer over at Rebo Gateway, and this training is on using the filter. So, in the training running lead type searches, we first selected our search type, our lead type, set a date range and some filters, and ran a search. Today, in this training, I'm going to show you how to effectively use the filter in your searches. So let's go ahead and run a quick search here for a, a, a lead type. I'm going to do a county. I'm going to select divorces and go a year back. And as I mentioned in the lead type search training, I recommend rather than using the search button to run your searches, always going through the filter. For more information on running the preliminary search for a lead type, see the RG training lead type searches video. So we have our search criteria set. Instead of using our search button, we're going to go through the filter. The reason it's so important to go through the filter uh, is there's actually a few reasons. One is you want to always be aware of what's going on in your filter. Okay, it's very easy to run a search on a Monday morning, set some filters, uh, log out, maybe log back in uh, the next day or Wednesday morning, run a different search, and just click the search button, completely forgetting you may have some filters in there from the last time you were logged in. And now you may be narrowing down your search results without even realizing it. So if you always submit your searches through the filter, you'll always be aware of what's going on in here. Now you may need to reset. That's a good thing to do on a regular basis. So we're gonna start with a reset. When we reset the filter, the default setup is that all three property types are selected. Both owner, occupied, and absentee owner are selected. Everything else is left alone. After I reset, I like to use the save criteria checkbox. What this does is it ensures that any changes we make here and click submit, it will hold those changes in here so that we don't have to continually make those changes for each search. So once I reset and click Save Criteria, we'll start here on the right-hand side. At the top, all three property types are selected. You have the ability to remove any property types you may not be interested in. Maybe you don't want condos in your search. Maybe you just want to focus on single family. Or you can choose to see just the owner occupies in this search or just the absentee owners. By the way, we always have the mailing address and provide that to you for absentee owners. And anything you print out of Rebo Gateway, such as labels or postcards, the system by default will always print the homeowner's mailing address. So you never have to worry that you're going to be sending something out to the renter. Phone only. This will omit, uh, I'm sorry, this will bring back only results where there is a phone number for that particular record. DNC stands for do not call. This is the national do not call registry. This filter will allow you to omit any properties where if there was a phone number and it was on the do not call list, that result would not show up in your search results. If you're in California, you'll have access to this filter called professional. Here you can omit records owned by real estate agents. Take them right out of your search results. There is an MLS filter where you can omit properties active on the MLS. Now in order for you to have access to this filter, you would need to A, be a licensed agent, and B, you would need to be in an area where we have that connection, that relationship with the local MLS. Those areas are as follows. All Southern California counties, some Northern California counties, Maricopa County, Arizona, and in Florida, Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach. I said some Northern California counties. To check and see if it's available in your county, go into your filter. If it's not available, it will say here, not available in this area. All right, to test and see if your con account is connected to your local MLS, see if you can put a check mark in this checkbox. If it allows you to put a check mark in there, your account is connected with your local MLS. If it doesn't allow you to put a check mark there, you're a licensed agent and you're in one of the areas I mentioned, please give us a call and we will help to resolve that issue. Our customer service phone number is 866-887-0206. Down here, you have the option with these first few selections of omitting any records where there's been a notice of default or omit records with a notice of sale or omit 
records with notice of LP. So we're searching divorce over the last year and we have the ability to omit these types of events or omit REOs or new bank owned properties. Below that you have the ability to select only notice of defaults or only notice of sales or only notice of LP. This is what we call layering data. So we're searching one year back on divorces but we only want to see the ones where there's also been a notice of default or a notice of sale or a notice of list pendants. Now having these checked does not require that the record have all of those events have occurred, it's just one of those, so it's or. Okay, over to the far left. You can narrow your search results down to a particular city or a zip code or more than one city or more than one zip code. There's a note here to help you remember. To select cities or zip codes, hold the control button down and click on the zip codes or cities you'd like to include. So if I just try to select more than one city here by just clicking, it will only let me select one at a time. If I hold down my control key on my keyboard, and for you Mac users, it may be the command key. As I hold that down, I can click and highlight multiple cities that I want in my search. If I leave none selected, it will remain countywide. And I can do the same thing with zip codes. The street filter here allows you to type in a street name and the results that come back in the search will only be the properties on that street. Here you have negative assessment value filters. The first one says show me only the results where the assessment or the county's assessed value of the property is less than the purchase price. This can be an indicator that the homeowner is underwater. Or you can go the other way and say, show me just the records where the assessed value is greater than purchase price. This can be an indicator that the homeowner has some equity. There's a tax defaults filter here. Everyone will have the ability to check this box, only tax default. This is another area where you can layer data. So we're adding an additional lead type on top of the main lead type we're searching, just like we did over here with the only notice of defaults notice of sales and notice of LP. Now in order for this to work for you, you need to make sure that tax defaults are an available lead type in your selected county. To do that, simply close the filter, go to your lead types. If tax defaults are in here as an available lead type in the selected county, you can also use that filter added on to whatever particular lead type you're searching. Purchase Money First Mortgage Lender was put in here for mortgage professionals looking for homeowners to refinance. They're able to search for those homeowners by uh, entering the name of the lender who loaned the original purchase money to those homeowners. The middle section here are all your minimum and maximum criteria. We actually call this the matchmaker tool and I'll explain in just a moment. So you have several filters in here where you can use just a minimum side, leaving the maximum blank. For instance, if you were looking for minimum three bedroom properties, you'd enter three under minimum, leave maximum blank. Or you can ju use just the maximum side. If you only wanted properties four bedrooms or less, you'd enter four and leave minimum blank. Or you can create a range by using both sides. I want to see all properties that are three to four bedroom. So transfer value is the first filter in here. This is the value the property was last transferred for or what the cur current homeowner paid for the property. Building size is in square foot and you want to make sure when you're using digits in any of these that you're using just numbers, no decimals or commas. Number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, number of units as it applies to the two to four unit multifamilies. Year bill is a four digit year so this would say show me only properties built after 1980. Lot size is also in square foot. Assessed value is the county's assessed value of the property. The same value we we're talking about over here. Now as you probably know, the county's assessed value of the property tends to be below market value. I suggest that you get an idea or a feel for what that difference looks like in your area. Is the county's assessed value, does that, does that tend to be 20% under market or 30%? Um, therefore, by gaining an understanding of that, you can compensate for that difference when you use this value filter. And there's a land value as assessed by the county, improvement value as assessed by the county, and purchase date. So as an example for purchase date, if I wanted to uh, identify homeowners that had a higher probability of equity, I could use a maximum purchase date of 
something like January 1st, 2007, or further back. This says only show me the properties that were purchased prior to January 1st, 2007. Once you have your filters set accordingly, you click the submit button, that runs your search, and you will then get your list of results. You can always access the filter again to add or remove filters to tailor the list to your liking. But definitely always make sure to submit your searches through that filter. And for the last reason you want to do that is because you want to use the filter. This filter is a very powerful component of the Rebo Gateway. So utilizing it is really going to help you make sure you're getting back the most results you can and the results that you want and create some very targeted lists of homeowners to market to.